Uh, kindly introduce yourself. Let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now and uh, plug and promote anything and everything. I'm in uh, Oakville, Ontario, Canada. That's where the band has been based out of for pretty much the past decade. And uh, yeah, we've we've we released a single, I think, a couple of months ago, and we're currently working on a new record. It's we haven't really done much since the pandemic, so we're we're starting to gear thing. Things are starting to return to normal in in our world. So. Yeah, what's all what's all your uh, social media links real quick, just so everybody can follow? For sure. Uh, you can follow us. I think it's at Malakota Metal on Instagram. Um, on uh, It should be the same on um, Facebook and on YouTube. If you go to MalakotaMetal.com, you should be able to find all of our links on there as well. Cool. Very cool. So when you say the, the pandemic like drastically affected you guys, can you elaborate? Like, Was it so much that... Obviously, all the shows halted, but but the creating of new music was also thoroughly halted during that. It was, yeah, it was tough because I mean, you know, even even getting into a, into the studio was was a bit tough because of the restrictions. In in Toronto, I think we had the longest uh, lockdown uh, in the world wow. uh, compared to other compared to other other cities and other countries. So it was like you know we we'd start to you know we were working on music or we had music that we were working on before, just before the pandemic, uh, at the tail end of 2019. So we were kind of partway through recording some stuff and then, you know, the pandemic hit and then it was like, okay, well, like we can't, we can't get together to record all the guitars. Uh, cause, uh, you know, we weren't, we, we weren't allowed to, but then even at, at that point too, when we finally managed to get all the music done, it was like, okay, how the hell do we do a music video? You know, it was, you know, we'd book a place and then it would be like the week of it. You know, we book a place a month in advance. And then the week of we'd get a call from the from the film crew or whatever. And they'd be like, yeah, sorry, we're, we're going under another lockdown. Uh, more restrictions are being added. So, no, we can't do it. Dang. That so it, it just sucked. it just it just sucked. Everything everything took longer. And, you know, it kind of like it kind of killed all of our momentum. You know, prior to that, we were we were gigging a lot more. And we had made, a, I think this is the case with a lot of bands, they started, a lot of bands started making headway. Uh, and as, as most musicians know, the more you, you keep putting yourself out there, uh, the more opportunities you can get. And then if it just kind of halts like that, you're kind of starting over again. Totally. So was our special place already written at that time? Or is that something new that's just like fresh and recent so, that was written so what what we did in this case was because we hadn't we hadn't really done anything since like 20, 2020 i guess uh we our special place was originally a song that was on an album we had come out with in i think 2016 it was actually a 12 minute song and it was a song that we never played live because it was 12 minutes like we could fit like four other songs in that time right <laughs> so what we did was we took our favorite section of the song and we basically shortened we basically took that and we created a reimagining uh with of it so that, that we kind of did that we had kind of worked on that i guess before the pandemic and then i think i shelved it and then we kind of finished it a couple of months ago and uh we revisited it and we're like ah, oh, this would be cool to release maybe maybe now we can actually add it into part of our live set and actually play the damn song. <laughs> <laughs> Do is it is it is it easy to say that that Tool is a, is a pretty big influence on you guys? It's they're actually not. <laughs> really? <laughs> everybody everybody always says um, people have told me uh, on our first record people said that I sound like Maynard, mm -hmm. and I was like I don't know where you got that because I'm not a I'm not a fan of like I don't dislike them. It's just not I I don't listen to them. You know like I've heard I hear them on the radio, but I don't I don't own anything Tool. Um, I don't think anybody in the band is a, is a big Tool fan, to be honest with you. Because I, I got Tool vibes when I was checking out your guys' catalog earlier today. I was like, I got total Tool vibes. And I was like, oh, man, they got to be big Tool fans. But so, sometimes you never know. Like, in, well, where does your inspiration come from? Like, who made you want to be a musician when you were younger? Well, when I was a kid, funny enough, like the, the thing that got me into music was wasn't even like rock or metal. It was it was musical theater. Um, I was really into I was really into that. I thought it was just such a, you know, the whole thing of like it's a story, but like there's a song attached to to every story beat. I thought that was really cool. And then as I got older, I kind of, 
you know, a, a lot of the dad rock, like stuff like Queen, ACDC, Black Sabbath, stuff like that. Like it kind of like I kind of found a correlation with that. So honestly, a lot of a lot of music from like the 70s and the 80s and musical theater is what inspired me. One of my favorite bands right now, though, and that has been, I guess, for a while for us is a band called Catatonia. If you like Tool, you, you'd probably like them. I, they, they do have some similarities. Um, it sounds familiar. You know. Yeah, I also I'm also a big fan of like you know Opeth. A lot of a lot, I do like Prague. I do like Prague. That's undeniable. Yeah, Opeth is badass. That's a good call. Yeah. Uh, did you bring Did you bring uh, any hot sauce with you today? I did. I brought this uh, small batch blueberry habanero made in Ontario hot sauce. Okay, blueberry. I got I got some blueberry hot sauce right here too. Blueberry hell from Hellfire. Or I'll oh, throw nice. it up here. <laughs> um so yeah but to do the to do the trivia and I'll, I'll need a second to look it up once we know so I'll, we'll jam our special place here in a minute but uh sure to do the trivia i need to know what movie or tv show have you seen the most or if i ask you trivia on either this movie or tv show it is impossible that i stump you oh geez you're gonna stump me on anything uh let me see i mean uh, the tv show supernatural that show I, I've seen every episode of it probably more than once. <laughs> okay. So you want to go uh, with that? Sure. Why not? <laughs> All right. We're hanging out with Malakota. If you guys get a second, please jump over on uh, Spotify, hit the follow button, support them. This is a song called Our Special Place. And because you're our guest, you automatically get on the poll. Supernatural, let's see. So this is like just a random section of the 12 minute or is it yeah. like rearranged or is it that like no. a little four minute marker of it? So so what we did is the, the part that I think I think we all agreed had the most catchiest section was the first like three, three or four minutes of the song. So we just took the first three or four minutes of the song. We were the way that the song kind of worked is there's almost like four chapters and uh, you, they all have like crazy time changes and, and, and tempo changes. So we, we could have easily taken any of those sections and started it, but it's, it's really just the first three minutes because we thought that was the catchiest part. <laughs> cool. Hell yeah. Well, let's see if I can stump you and get you to do some hot sauce here. Here we go. In Supernatural, specifically season two. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dean falls for a certain drink. Can you name the drink that he has a bunch of times in this particular episode in season two? It's a shot. I have no idea. It's a shot. 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 I have no idea. It's going to be. It, it's tequila. I does it doesn't specify that. It just says the name of the shot. What's the name? I don't know. <laughs> purple Nurples. Purple Nurples. No. Pur purple Nurples. Enjoy the hot sauce, my friend. And uh, I'll, I'll do some go. of the hot sauce with you. Cheers. So I've got my popcorn with me. Popcorn. Yeah. So when you're testing hot sauce, so I used to make hot sauce, uh, You're the thing that usually they give you at these hot sauce tasting uh, events is popcorn because it's supposed to be the best thing to have with it because it's not really tasty on its own. Interesting. Learning stuff today. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you, Lucas. <laughs> Cheers. There we go. Woo! 
So what what's the pepper that's in your your hot sauce? Uh, this particular well, I've got like four or five over here. Um, okay. This particular one says Jokakia pepper mash containing butte Jokia peppers, red jalapenos, serranos, and then it's got like a bunch of blueberry puree, blackberries, mm. all kinds of berries and stuff to attempt <laughs> to give it a little a little sweet flavor on it. What's up? So you so you said that the the album is in the works earlier. That's what you said, correct? Yeah, so we're working on a full length album. We've been working on it for the past year. Um, is there a rough and... timetable of when you guys would like to release it? I'd I'd like to release it uh, before next year hits, but I'm not too sure if that's going to happen. We're going to start. We're just starting to film. Uh, we're going to start filming some music videos at the end of the summer. We're actually doing a live performance, uh, and we're we're recording and filming filming that. Uh, I think in in August, I think is what we're doing. We don't have a date, exact date for that just yet, but yeah, hell yeah. And I'm in the I'm in the process of mixing the album as we speak today. That, that's why I'm at the studio today. That's what I was doing before you called. <laughs> you were doing some mixing. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah! Can you tell me how a a typical Malakota song starts from scratch? Like you guys, is it is it somebody comes over with a riff? Or a, or a vocal melody, or are we in practice and then just kind of rolling off ideas and practice? Like, how do how do you guys write a song? It's a bit weird. Um, so so my background is I'm a recording engineer, music producer, and I'm also a, a college teacher. I teach music production, recording engineering, stuff like that. Uh, song songwriting analysis is something that I teach, and one of the things that um, that I've always been uh, a big advocate for is that it doesn't matter how good your riff is. It doesn't matter how cool your lyrics are. If the song doesn't flow and the song sucks, none of that matters. So actually the first thing that we start off with is we actually fit whatever, before we write down a note, we actually try to figure out a song structure. Maybe we'll have like a riff here or there, but it, it doesn't become a thing of like, okay, now we have to figure out what comes next. Cause I, I, sometimes that can be pretty tough. What we'll do is we'll try to figure out what is this riff? Is it a chorus? Is it a verse? Is it a bridge? Is it for the solo, etc.? And then we'll kind of write a structure. Uh, we use uh, Pro Tools as, as, a, as our recording software. So we, we pretty much, as soon as somebody writes something, we put it into our recording software. And then we kind of come up with like a, a template or a map of what we want the song, how we want the song to flow. So it's a pretty... Uh, I, I maybe doctored way of, of, of songwriting, but I kind of found that it, it kind of, um, it kind of like, you don't, you don't kind of argue as much about what should we do next? It becomes more like, okay, like, you know, we have a structure here. Let's, let's try to adhere to it. Cause we, we know we can see it where this is going. Yeah. I like that. I like that. And sometimes you guys, you forget, not you guys, but you, you forget uh, like particular things. So you have to just track it, even if it's just a cool riff or two, and then you can just come back to it later another day. But, Sometimes you forget what that riff was, whatever. Um, I have that case because I don't, well, I don't play guitar, but also. You want to get high? I also smoke a lot, so I'd be forgetting stuff. Uh, <laughs> let's try one more one more Supernatural trivia. Let's sure. go, for, go for the double stump on you. Okay. In Supernatural, can you tell me what Gordon's last name is? Cord Gordon? It says Gordon's last name. Gordon's last name. Gordon's last name. I'm trying to think who the hell was Gordon in Supernatural. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't watch it. I'm not is sure. it? Is it? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh. Oh, wait a minute. No, I think I know who it is. I think he's he's the guy who becomes a vampire. I think it's Gordon Walker. That is correct. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh. <laughs> Spit in the wheel. Well done. I don't know if you drink beer or if you even have a beer with you, but if you do, you're more than welcome to chug a beer with me. Uh, well, before we before we let you go, Lucas, can you can you do me a favor and uh, just give us some band advice? Advice for bands that are just starting out; they have no skin in the game. What what advice can you give, or maybe a mistake you guys made earlier in your career um, that you don't want somebody else to make? Oh. That, there's so many things that I would that I would redo. I think I think the biggest thing is don't ever put yourself in a situation where 
where you're going to regret it. And what I mean by that is specifically from like an art artistic point of view, you're not, you're never really every time when it, there's some sort of business thing, it, it's always a gamble. Even if it's a good business decision, it's still always a gamble in this industry I find. But as an artist, um, your voice is pretty much the only thing that you have that differentiates you from other, other musicians. So don't ever compromise that. Don't ever compromise that because, you know, maybe like a manager is telling you to do something in a certain way uh, or, or because maybe there's other people around you that that they're trying to jump on. They think jumping onto a fad will be one of the best things out there uh, for you. It Typically, it's not. Uh, I think you should just stick to your guns and just just keep honing. And just because it doesn't work out the first the first time you release a record in that style or with that sound, it doesn't mean that it won't eventually do well. You have to hone it. You have to craft it. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't work. Just come out with something really, really friggin' cool. That's 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 your only job as an artist. I love that. Uh, there's a chat question coming in from our boy JB. JB Music says, as an audio engineer, what is one production flaw that drives you up a wall? One production flaw? Um, there is a band that I work with that they, they did all of their recording at home and they didn't know how to record right it was things like you know they they one day they would record their rhythm guitars let's say and they put a certain microphone on their amp use a certain guitar and then they wouldn't finish recording the song and then a month later they would reset up the amp use a different microphone and it would be the same song so it would be inconsistent um, i think that's that's like the biggest thing it's like if you don't know what you're doing you know, that's why there's a reason why there's recording engineers. There's a reason why there's music producers. That becomes really hard to mix because you're dealing with inconsistency. Um, it makes sense. And that just, it, it's hard to make it, it, it's really hard to make it sound consistent. And like, you know, the, the, the it's not, you're not going to make the band happy. The best thing at that point is just, just start over. Just do it right the first time. I think that's my biggest, uh, biggest gripe is, is just it not being done right. Uh, the first time. No, don't, don't compromise the quality for anything. Great advice. Great advice. At Malakota Metal on just about everything, correct? Pretty much. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, this is a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you. Oh, one last thing. If you could, I always forget to do this. If you could, can you can you do me a favor and just do like a drop for me? Hey, I'm Lucas from Malakota. You're watching local band Smoke Out. Something like that, but you can sure. spin it, twist it, however you'd like. Sure. Hey, this is Lucas from Malakota. You're watching local band Smoke Out. Say hi. I love it. Dude, you're awesome, man. Have a fantastic day. Finish those mixes. And uh, if you guys are watching, please support them. Hit the follow button on Spotify. Check out some of their stuff. Jam our special place. And we look forward to the album, hopefully, coming out before the year is over. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas of Malakata. Give me a hell yeah. Welcome to the local band, Smoke Out.